Is it getting to be too much with the amount of fragrances that the houses or brands are launching every day? There's another boatload of fragrances that I'm going to talk to you about today in this video, but do let me know if you guys are feeling overwhelmed. Is there just too many out there on the market? Are they all great fragrances? Let me know. Put a comment down below, but I've got 16 or 17 fragrances I'm going to talk to you about today, plus several in the bonus section after the outro as well. Find out about these new fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, I'm talking about brand new fragrances, but do let me know if you're overwhelmed with all the fragrances that are launching. So many are just coming out over and over again from different brands. Some brands release a lot. Some don't release that many. For example, I've got Chanel here with Comet. They haven't released a, a brand new release for a while, but the rest of the fragrance, I mean the brands, are constantly cranking out new fragrances. It's getting to be overwhelming to keep up with uh, what the brands have. Let me know if you're feeling this way. But what I like to do is do let you know about new launches. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first fragrance going to the house of Mugler. It's Alien Hypersense. So some of the fragrances most likely have come out already by the time this video airs. Some have not. I think this one's already out, but in Europe, not in the States. This is the fragrance created originally created by Dominic Ropion, the original Alien, not Alien Goddess. And then they've gone back to Dominic Ropion to create a flanker of the original Alien called Alien Hypersense. Sounds interesting. I'd like to get my nose on it because I do enjoy Dominic Ropion's creations. This features jasmine sandback, Indian jasmine, cashmere and amber wood, driftwood, musk, pear, green mandarin. I'm still waiting for something for the men. Come on, Mugler, L'Oreal, launch something. In the meantime, we'll check out Alien Hypersense. If you've gotten your nose on it, do let me know. Put a comment down below so we can find out what it's all about. Okay, up next, we've got a fragrance, a new fragrance from the house of Kali, and it's part of the Oudgasm collection, and it's Smoky Oud 07, this one right here. So this is the fifth Oudgasm collection fragrance from this house. They launched four, and remember, I featured all four in a scent club kit three decanted and one official sample from the brand. So there was rose, there was vanilla, there was cafe, and there was tobacco. Now we have Smoky Oud. And Smoky Oud is also created by Hamid Muradi Kashani. The other fragrances Hamid Muradi Kashani was involved with, he created some of them, but not all of them. This one he has created. This has notes of cedar wood, gayak wood, oud, patchouli, vanilla, white musk, cystus, geranium, jasmine, rum, and saffron. And since I have the bottle, I'm going to go ahead and do a sniff on camera to let you know a little bit about this. What I like about this one is there's a bit of a reminder of Tom Ford's oud wood, but also some other ouds that I've smelled and not very daring and out there kind of oud fragrances. This seems pretty mass appealing, which is kind of cool, but it does have that kind of westernized oud smell in here. Again, that's what I'm getting from it. And what I like about this one also, it's patchouli forward, and I like the patchouli on it. So we are not breaking any new ground with this, but I like the combination, and this might end up being my second or third favorite from the line. Cafe was my favorite. Tobacco was my second favorite at the time. And the rose and the vanilla I liked, but uh, it was for me all about cafe and uh, the tobacco. But here, I'm really liking Smoky Oud. I'm not really getting a lot of smoke, but I like this kind of very um, mass appealing kind of Oud. So we'll see uh, more about it or hear more about it in the future. But uh, for now, Smoky Oud is out, and let me know if you've gotten your nose on it. The next fragrance is from the house of Maison Crivelli. It's Tuberose Astral, and I've gotten my nose on this one as well. And I feel like this would be my second favorite in the Quintam Biche Extracts collection of fragrances next to Patchouli Magnetic. This is featuring notes of Cistus Absolute, Vanilla, Indian Tuberose, Leather Notes, Musk, Patchouli, Carrot Seeds, Osmanthus Absolute, Cinnamon, Cumin. And this is the fourth Quintam Biche Extracts fragrance. My favorite is Patchouli magnetic. This would be my second favorite. I've got my nose on it, but I have to test it out to see how it wears. I really don't care for Hibiscus Mahajad and the Ambre Chromatique from the collection, but this one, I smelled it, as I said. It smelled really great and not a big fan of tuberose, but I enjoyed this one quite a bit. So I guess all the brands are going to have a fragrance called Goddess. We've got one from Killian now called Sunkissed Goddess. Is this the fourth or fifth goddess fragrance out there on the market? It might even be the sixth, actually. And this is actually, it's an Estee Lauder brand, Killian. 
and Estee Lauder has, uh, you know, bronze goddess. So this is sun-kissed goddess and kind of the similar theme created by Khalees Becker. It's coconut, tiar flower, ilang ilang, bergamot, neroli, vanilla, labdanum, guyacwood. I didn't understand why they would call their fragrance sun-kissed goddess when the idea of this fragrance does remind me of goddess by Estee Lauder, but maybe that's why they're getting away with calling it sun-kissed goddess. I don't think they can trademark the name goddess. That's why we see so many goddesses, but... This one doesn't sound as exciting to me. I don't know if it sounds exciting to you guys. But moving on to the House of Juliet Has a Gun. They have a fragrance called Juliet EDP. This is sour cherries, cashmere, jasmine, pink pepper, tonka beans. Aren't we bored of cherries already? This is Juliet Has a Gun's cherry. Does it sound interesting to you? It seems to be a musky cherry. But moving on to the House of Van Cleef and Arpel from their collection Extraordinaire Fragrances. This is Ensemble Perso. Incense, black and pink pepper, vanilla, leather, tobacco, amber and myrrh. Not sure who the perfumer behind this fragrance is because they usually publicize all of the perfumers. But, you know, this one sounds interesting. Is it going to smell like baby cat? Incense, black pepper, pink pepper, vanilla, leather. Oh my god, that smells, that sounds like baby cat. Now, moving on to Paco Rabanne, they're coming out with Parfum versions of Invictus and Olympia. Olympia? Olympia. Uh, so, I have not been the biggest fan of Invictus, but always curious to check out fragrances that are Parfum concentration. And also, this is created by Anne Flippo. I've been enjoying her creations lately, minus Angel Elixir. So, both of, well, both of them are created by Anne Flippo, but each one has a different additional perfumer. For Invictus Parfum, it's Carolyn Dumour, and it features notes of marine notes, soap, cashmere, lavender, pink pepper, myrtle, violet leaves, musk, and sandalwood. So, marine notes and soap. Marine notes, to me, kind of smells a bit dirty, so combining it with soap, maybe it'll clean it up. Who knows? But Olympia Parfum is Anne Flippo and Paul, Paul Guerlain. This one features notes of green accord, jasmine, benzoin, musk, orange blossom, clary sage, pink pepper, and rose. Anybody fans of these two fragrances? Very mass market designer fragrances for men and women from Paco Rabanne called Invictus and Olympia. And I do have to be honest, Invictus happens to be one of my least favorite men's designer fragrances. I, I don't like it. So, Tamin has a fourth Britalone collection fragrance launching, created by Nathalie Lorson, and the Britalone collection are, you know, fresher fragrances from the house of Tamin. They're creative directed by Christopher Chong, who used to be the creative director at Amouage. So this one is created by Nathalie Lorson, featuring Atlas Cedar, Cipriol, Wood Leather, Honey, Ilang Ilang, Blonde Tobacco, Bergamot, Neroli, Orange Blossom. This one sounds like a bit more complex the honey, the tobacco, and things like that. We'll see how it is. Are you guys enjoying the Britalone collection? Again, this is the fourth, I believe. Not the, no. It could be the, it's, I think it's the fourth, but maybe there's a fifth one, one be that came out before this. But moving on to Dia Sandurga, they have a fragrance launching called Black Magenta, of course, created by David Seth Moulds. And this seems like a tobacco fragrance. It's Balkans Tobacco, Black Amber, Sandalwood, Carnation, Orange Blossom, Oris Concrete, Black Pepper, Galbanum, Pink Pineapple. What the heck is Pink Pineapple? I do enjoy Dia Sandurga fragrances. I'm curious to try this one. Joram Studio has a new fragrance called Asker. This one sounds very complex and might be a bit challenging. Created by Ewan McCall, who does all the fragrances for Joram Studio. It's Ash, Atlas Cedar, Oris Root, Driftwood, Angelica, Salt, Sichuan Pepper, Chamomile, Ambergris, Vetiver, Woodruff, Calamus, Seagrass, Papyrus, Elemi, Galbanum. Are you guys fans of Joram Studio? Do let me know if you are a fan. I have a video on the channel of several of their fragrances. Go catch that. In fact, I also have a video on Dia Sandurga with their recent acquisition by Manzanita Capital. You can go catch those two videos videos if you want to learn more about those brands. Up next we've got a fragrance from the house of Ralph Lauren called Polo 67. I'm highlighting this fragrance but honestly the fragrance sounds a bit boring. Let's see how it is and how good it smells. It's featuring notes of sage, goldenrod, patchouli, juniper, vetiver, rose hips, bergamot, lemons, pineapple. I'm curious to get my nose on it but it seems like pretty mass market from according to the notes but I'm also curious has anybody gotten their nose on polo oud? I haven't seen it anywhere. I'd like to get my nose on it and hopefully I'll be able to get my nose on it on my travels uh, coming very soon. 
So the next fragrance I'm talking about is by Akakapa. It's Dolce Treviso. Who's a fan of this house? Smaller house. They're mostly known for Muschio Bianco, which I recommend on the channel quite a bit for a very clean, white, musky, maybe soapy fragrance. But this Dolce Treviso sounds like a gourmand. Sounds delicious, actually. That's why I'm highlighting it here. It's benzoin, cocoa, coffee, tiramisu, heliotrope, Tahitian vanilla, cafe, macchiato, musk, vanilla blossom. Doesn't that sound delicious? Let me know if you're a fan of that brand. Let me know if you've tried of, m tried Muschio Bianco and let me know if this one sounds great to you. But moving on to the house of Ramon Monogal, it's Flamenco Extra de Parfum. I'm somewhat of a fan of the original, and I'm curious to try the extrait. I'm always curious well, with a higher concentration fragrance. Let's see which direction or how it w wears. But this features notes of amber, leather, musk, oud, cedar wood, iris, jasmine, orange blossom, raspberry, rose, and saffron. Are you guys fans of flamenco, the original? And now what do you guys think of this extra de parfum version of the original flamenco? Let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. So up next, we've got Ferragamo's Red Leather. So they're continuing their series of leather fragrances. I'm not sure who the perfumer on this one is. I like the idea of a red leather, vetiver, leather, ginger, orris, sandalwood, bergamot, rosemary, jasmine, mandarin. I enjoy some of them and I haven't gotten my nose on a lot of them. I think there's like maybe four of them uh, in the flankers for this uh, particular collection. But if you're a fan of these fragrances, let me know. They're pretty nice leather fragrances, mass market leather, men's designer uh, fragrances, I think. But the next fragrance, it's Chanel Comet. And I mentioned this earlier. They don't launch fragrances that frequently. I like something a little more in, in between. Chanel takes forever to launch fragrances. And I did a video on this and also their price hikes recently. Hopefully you got you caught that video. And I mentioned, what the heck does Olivier Pe Poles do as a in-house perfumer for Chanel? I mean, they're not cranking out fragrances. So does Chanel need an in-house perfumer? But also, I'm a bit hesitant about this particular fragrance because it has the cherry blossom note with iris, heliotrope, and musk. I am not the biggest fan of the cherry blossom note in fragrances. Don't get me wrong, in real life, I love the way they smell. But in, in perfumes, I don't find them very interesting. So I'm a bit cautious about this fragrance. If anyone's gotten their nose on Comet from Chanel, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is Floris's Santal Intense. I believe Floris has a, a fragrance called Santal. In fact, I know if they do. So is this an intense version of the original? It doesn't sound like it, but maybe it is. Uh, sandalwood, cedar, vetiver, bergamot, lavender, vanilla, nutmeg, green grass, cloves, frankincense, amber, black pepper, lemons, and musk. Are you a fan of Floris? It's one of, you know, England's uh, or the Britain's, um, the UK's, I should say England's, longest uh, standing uh, perfume houses. They did have some great fragrances at one time. They were a bit under the radar all of a sudden, not as um, widely distributed like Penhaligon's, but they do once in a while create some amazing fragrances. And I've been a fan of the Santal from Flores. It reminds me a bit, the original Santal, not this one. It does remind me a bit of Gucci uh, Envy. If you're a fan of Gucci Envy, uh, you might want to check out Santal, the original because uh, it reminds me of it. But we'll see how Floris' Santal Intense is. But anyway, those are all the fragrances I have for you in this video and up until after the outro. I've got a few little sections of different brands of fragrances that I hear that are coming out. Let me know which fragrances you're excited for. And also, if there's nothing here, is there something else that you've heard that's coming out that you're really looking forward to smelling? Or if you've smelled them, what are your thoughts? Put a comment down below so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Thanks for sticking around for the bonus section. I've got two different brands with two different sections here I'm going to tell you about. First of which is Joe Malone. Have you guys seen these new bottles? It's really quite unique that Joe Malone is kind of going way out there from their regular collection of bottles in new collections. Are these collections, is this like, a, is this a collection of fragrances that are like limited edition? I wasn't able to figure it out, but I like these bottles and I like that they're different from what they normally release. So this is Musk Memento, Passiflora, Emerald Time, 
and ginger beer. They all sound really great to me, but I think my favorites would be ginger beer, musk memento, emerald thyme, and passiflora in that order. But musk memento has notes of white musk, amber, cedar wood, and true lavender, what's known as true lavender, which is basically English lavender, aldehydes, and ambrette. I like, I like these bottles. They'd be nice collectible bottles. The next fragrance, Passiflora, it's passionflower, vanilla, patchouli, tonka beans, cardamom, and honeysuckle. This one sounds uber feminine. The next fragrance, Emerald Thyme, it's thyme, rosemary, geranium, moss, lemons, and pettigran. Finally, ginger beer, roasted oak, vetiver, amorous, cinnamon, and ginger. Which one of these sounds great to you and what do you guys think of the bottles? They look really cool and collectible. Maybe these are limited edition, maybe there's some exclusive something, or maybe they just are changing the bottles, who knows? But they just redid all of their bottles over, so um, I don't understand how or why they would do it. So I'm just assuming that these are a specific collection of fragrances. But if you've gotten your nose on these fragrances, let me know, put a comment down, which one sounds great to you between uh, the four that I spoke about. Again, for me, it would be Musk Memento, I think, first. Uh, that's the one I would really enjoy. Ginger Beer next, but maybe it's a toss up between those two. And then Emerald Thyme and then Passiflora. Do you like the bottles? Let me know, put a comment down below so I can find out. And then finally, a few little scoops on Maison Francis Kirkjian fragrances. So Maison Francis Kirkjian is going to re-release A Pomme. So I happen to have A Pomme Pour Homme here. I've got two bottles, thankfully. And so it is coming out again. It is being re-released according to the rumors I'm hearing. Are you guys fans of A Pomme? And I'm assuming it is the Pour Homme that's coming out, not the the uh, Pour Femme. I've never gotten my nose on Pour Femme, and maybe I did somewhere along the way, but I really appreciated A Pomme Pour Homme because it did remind me of Gautier Squared or Gautier Two. Did you guys ever compare these two fragrances? So that's a, a fragrance re-release I'm looking forward to, but if you haven't smelled the original A Pomme Pour Homme, let me go ahead and do a quick sniff on camera. I think from what I hear, this is launching at the end of the year or towards the end of the year. And to me, it's that combination of orange blossom, jasmine with warm vanillic ambery notes. It's quite good, really, really great. It smells really great. I mean, I hadn't smelled this for a long time and I'm loving the way it smells. It's a bit soapy, but vanillic and there's also a bit of musk in there. And it always reminded me of Gautier 2 or Gautier Squared because both of the fragrances were created by uh, the same perfumer, Francis Kirkjian. Have you guys gotten your nose on the, the new version of Gautier Squared? This is the bottle right here. Uh, somebody recently asked me about this and where they can buy it. And this is a very limited type of release. It was launched in France as a limited online exclusive. And I think only there for a year. And then it finally made its way here at the end of last year after I got my bottle from France. I did a video on it if you haven't caught it. And then I think now the USA store is selling it, but I just got a notification recently that said back in stock. So it's very limited quantity. So if you're a fan of the original Gautier 2 or Gautier Squared, get yourself a bottle. But they these two fragrances, A Pomme and also a Gautier Squared or Gautier uh, two do remind me of one another, but they're a bit different. To me, I think there's differences here between uh, the A Pomme from Maison Francis Kirkjian to the Gautier Squared. I think what the difference is the floor flowers. Everything else smells very similar. The vanillic notes, the ambery notes, and the musky notes. The flowers are a bit different. On the box, it does say musk, vanilla, amber, but for me, there's flowers in there for sure. I thought there was jasmine according to the Jean-Paul Gaultier. So the flowers are a bit different, but in the end, they're both uh, quite similar. And is that the reason why Maison Francis Kirkjian is re-releasing A Pomme? Because Gaultier Squared or Gaultier 2 has been re-released. Uh, I don't know, but if you were a fan of A Pomme, and I'm, again, I'm also I'm assuming that it's the Pour Homme because I never was a fan of the Pour Femme. I, in fact, I don't remember it, but A Pomme 
Pour Homme was a, a pretty popular fragrance, I think, for the brand. And so maybe they're relaunching it as a unisex offering offer now, since perhaps this is out as a unisex offering, the Gautier Squared. Anyway, that's basically the details I have, the only details I have for a poem from the House of Maison Francis Kirchner, that it's coming back uh, towards the end of the year, more like September, uh, October. I think it's an autumn release from what I hear. And then the next fragrance from the House of Maison Francis Kirchner that I hear from a rumor that's launching is Reflets de Ambre. So another amber. Whereas a poem is a floral amber fragrance, so now we have two, or maybe it reflects the amber is a poem. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm only hoping or wishing that they would bring back Absolute Pour Le Soir. But let's talk a little bit about Reflects the Amber. It's another amber fragrance, and Grand Soir is also an amber fragrance. So what are they actually launching? Is a poem going to be renamed Reflects the Amber? Does anybody know these rumors? Or is Reflects the Amber a complete brand new fragrance compared to a poem? that's coming out as well. But either way, either two fragrances or a poem renamed as Reflects the Amber is launching soon. And both, again, are amber fragrances, although Reflects the Amber seems like more of an amber and a poem, which I believe stands for A Piece of Me, uh, is a redo of the original. And again, I don't know if it's the male version or the female version. Most likely it is the male because I feel like the male version or the Pour Homme, A Pomme Pour Homme was the more popular. Anyway, if you have any info on these two fragrances or one, let me know. Put a comment down below. I'd like to find out the details. But this is just rumors I've heard online, chitter chatter from people, and I wanted to report on it uh, and let you guys know. And I don't understand why brands, re you know, remove fragrances and bring them back. Maybe because it is true with all the ingredient banning and things like that. But A Pomme... I think got discontinued somewhere around 2020. Um, it was around that time when uh, Absolute Pour Le Soir got, you know, discontinued. CL de Gum got discontinued, and A Pomme got uh, discontinued. So all three of these were three of my favorite fragrances from Maison Francis Kirchner. Sadly, they're gone. And hopefully they'll bring them all back. Who knows? We shall see. But if you're excited for this, let me know. Put a comment down. If Reflects the Ambra is not the same as A Pomme, what do you guys think that fragrance is going to be all about? Even though it's got the word Amber in it, so it's going to be most likely an Amber, but how different would it be from Grand Soir? Because Grand Soir is an Amber as well. In fact, Gentle Fluidity Gold is also an Amber, more of a vanillic Amber, so... Uh, it's a bit confusing with all the different amber fragrances. Is that what Francis Kirchner's brand, Maison Francis Kirchner, is known about or known for, the amber fragrances? I thought Baccarat Rouge was the big seller for the brand. In fact, Baccarat Rouge is so popular that uh, everybody seems to either love it or hate it. But we'll see what happens. I'm curious to see if A Pomme Pour Homme gets that re-release. Is it coming out as Reflects the Amber or it's two different fragrances that are launching? Anyway, thanks so much for sticking around. Let me know your thoughts on these two releases. Uh, add a comment down below. Bye-bye.